Good Monday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing. Looking at our significant impacts map, we have none. Uh, winds will be diminishing quite a bit. Uh, we'll be gradually drying out. They have some significant rain up in Idaho, uh, but overall a fairly quiet period over the next several days. Precipitation yesterday, quite a bit up in Idaho and into parts of western Wyoming. Uh, little to none once you head south of there. And on the right-hand side, we do see that we did have some lightning um, in some of our areas into uh, far northern Nevada, into a, a good portion of Idaho, but all of this was fairly wet. But we'll have to watch for the potential of holdovers as we dry out this week. Great Basin fire activity, new fire starts in the past 24 hours, given by the red circles. The yellows are existing fires, and you see some starts uh, up uh, along the Wasatch and up into parts of eastern Idaho as well. Looking at our precipitation, uh, the past seven days on the left, you can see that uh, quite dry across uh, southern areas, and uh, uh, you don't get really significant precipitation until you get into the northern half of Idaho. And the past two weeks, a similar story. Uh, we did have some residual monsoonal moisture um, almost two weeks ago. That was about the last time we've dried out considerably in our southern areas. And if we take a look at our ERCs, you can see that a lot of our southern and eastern areas are still quite high and critical, somewhere in the 70th and 80th percentiles in a lot of areas, but they've taken a nosedive in our northern areas due to the recent wetting rains, and that'll continue to magnify itself. ERCs respond sometimes a little slower. I'm sure a lot of these other areas will drop off into the green as well as they go into tomorrow. The latest infrared satellite imagery with upper level maps shows unseasonally deep low pressure now pushing up into Montana with lots of that moisture that produced rains across much of Idaho. Uh, we see another low pressure dropping down taking its place, so a breezy, cool, and high humidity week for our northern areas. This broad, tight belt of westerly winds here given by these uh, pressure lines uh, indicate that uh, there will be no monsoonal formation in the foreseeable future. You see down into Arizona, New Mexico, and all the way down into uh, Mexico itself uh, dry. Any residual moisture is well down to the south. And so our significant fire potential for today, we've greened out quite a bit across Idaho uh, and moistened up quite a bit across northern areas of Nevada into uh, Utah as well. Still critically dry across southern and southwestern areas. If we look at the weather factors for this afternoon, you can see humidity quite high in the north given by these green shades uh, at or above 30%, but still down near 10% or some single digits to us to our south. So definitely a tale of two cities here across our area. On the right-hand side, winds uh, fairly light, quite different from what we've had uh, the past few days. And then for Tuesday, you see that low pressure uh, pushing on out, another low through here, but still this tight westerly gradient, drier air punching in with uh, these tannish colors and our dryness levels on the right-hand side. Uh, the weather factors in play on Tuesday, again, higher humidity to the north, much drier single-digit humidity to the south. Fuels will continue to dry out here across our southern and central areas. Winds overall on the right-hand right -hand side quite light as well. Then on Wednesday, drier air overspreading the area, uh, broad high pressure, uh, westerly winds not unseasonably strong, so just uh, regular breezy type winds, no major changes. On the right hand side, you do see we start drying things out, more brown on the map spreading from south to north and even Idaho, uh, starting to dry out into the moderately dry yellow category. Looking at uh, weather factors, again, single digit humidity to the south, uh, uh, higher humidity to the north, but still they're starting to dry out now in, in uh, parts of uh, Idaho as well. Wind speeds westerly quite light on the right hand side. Precipitation accumulation the next three days as we go through today into Thursday morning. Just some leftover stuff across uh, Idaho. Most of it will be in the next 12 to 24 hours and up maybe close to a half to three quarters of an inch just north of McCall. Uh, lighter amounts elsewhere and bone dry everywhere else. Further down the road as we go into Thursday, we see another trough low pressure coming in. Still dry air through here. We don't see this green subtropical monsoonal moisture making a move to us anytime soon. On the right hand side, our dryness levels continue to dry out. And then uh, not much change as we go into Friday. Another trough drops down. We continue to dry out. Saturday, um, no major changes. And then even by Sunday, uh, another trough of low pressure, we're on the dry southern edge, so uh, maybe the winds will be picking up by then. Um, monsoonal moisture still to our south, and again, we're starting to dry out pretty significantly. Precipitation seven-day totals, uh, the deceptive up here in Idaho, this will be over the next 12 to 24 hours, otherwise most areas should stay dry through the period. 
And if we look at our extended 8 to 14 day outlook, this cooler than normal signal indicates that low pressure will be having its presence felt, means uh, southwest winds. And the right hand side, it means a uh, relatively dry, at least no significant monsoonal push. We'll have to watch to see when the next thunderstorm push comes through, because as fuels dry in southern areas, uh, those first few days could be quite critical. And this concludes our briefing. Have a great day.